Hello everybody. In this video, I want to assemble a bolt and a nut with nut being fixed and the bolt being able to spin inside the nut and uh, exactly moving uh, per the pitch, right? So when you rotate the bolt one full revolution, it just goes on, up and down by one pitch. And these are both, uh, this is M10 bolt, right? And this is the knot for it. So not only I want to do that, I want to show you how to limit the amount of motion of the bolt in the knot. In other words, when I put this bolt in the knot and I bring it down, I only want this guy to go down as far as there is a thread. When it reaches the shank part that is not threaded, I don't want the bolt to be able to go down any further, okay, and stops there. So how can I do that? Well, here, the first thing I need to do is First, make sure that the shaft and the, the thread of the bolt and the thread of the knot are concentric. So for that, I bring the temporary axis and I select them like that and I force them to be coincident. This way, now they are concentric. So now clearly the bolt can go only up and down, align the axis. And uh, this is the first step, but of course it's not enough because now I need the motion to be proper, right? So the next thing I need to do is to apply the screw constraint. So I go back here and um, under mechanical, I use the screw constraint and it says, uh, what is it that you want to do? I say, I want to control the distance per revolution. And it says, how much is it? And in this case, it's 1.5 millimeter, which is the pitch of these threads. And it says between what two entities. And here I use this shaft and I use a portion of this top circle here. And that should get the job done for me. So let's go ahead and select the portion of this arcs. And uh, let's see if I can grab that. need to be on the top there we go so now this should work okay and uh, here I, let me change my units to mills so this screw constraint here it should work just make sure again this guy is one and a half mil so it's equal to the uh, pitch of this thread so now if I rotate, you see that it is going down and it, I cannot freely move it up and down. So now the rotary motion and the linear motion, they depend on each other. And still it's not enough. Right now you might have interference between the components and you might say, how come? So here I would go ahead and do a section view and show you that you might have interference or actually you don't need a section view. You can just go to evaluate and uh, click on the interference detection and see if there is interference and you might be surprised that there is. Okay, so here you see there is interference. Okay, because although the motion is right, but the uh, threads are not exactly uh, placed in the right location. And you can see that if you do a, a section view, which I'm going to show you right now. So to do a nice section view, what I did is I applied a, a coincident constraint between these two surfaces. So I can cut them exactly in the same relative orientation. Now I do a section view and cut them exactly in... The middle and now if I look at this direction look here as you can see the teeth are penetrating okay so if you want to get this right you need to first uh, deactivate this uh, screw mate as I did right it was active so first I deactivate it so I can freely move this guy up and down okay and then I put it right where the teeth have no interference, something like that. Look, there is gap between them. And I recalculate interference, make sure it says no interference, like that. Now that there is no interference, I can reactivate my screw constraint. Okay, and now if I go ahead and rotate this one full revolution, 
Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, rotate this guy, right? You'll see that. Let me grab it, or let me, you know what? Let me do this. Uh, the thing is, I need to uh, get rid of this uh, coincidence. So now, if I rotate it as much as I want, and you see clearly that it is going down proportional to how much I'm rotating. Now, if you calculate the interference again, you should not have interference because you started correct. And now it doesn't matter how much you rotate, you still have no what interference, okay? So this is for a proper assembly of a bolt and a nut. But as I said, uh, here you have no limit on how much you rotate this. So you can keep going, keep going, keep going until this part that has no thread starts to go inside the nut, which is physically not possible, okay? Physically, you cannot go any further down right look here you see i'm getting up to my limits now here is where you, this part wants to go in and if it does guess what you're gonna have uh, interference again okay so here look if i do interference one more time there should be interference there we go you see because the diameter of that is more than the uh, internal diameter of the thread. So you have interference. So the question is, could you limit this? Could you not allow this bolt to be further uh, tightened in when it reaches the bottom of its thread at the very low point, which is maybe here? You don't let it go any further down. Is that a possibility? And the answer is yes. How? For that, we need to add another constraint, which is the offset between this one and this one. Okay, we can do that. So right now, let's say this is the lowest that I want to go, or maybe I rotate it a little bit more and get to the lowest point that I want to go, which maybe is here. So now um, I can measure this distance, which is between here and here. And you see it's like 26 mil or something like that. Huh? So I don't want this distance to be any shorter than 26 mils. So I go to assembly and select these two faces. And I use a distance. Right? I use a distance. And the question is this distance that is like at 26 mil. Is there any way for me to get a limit for this? Can I provide a limit on that 26 mil? So clearly it's not here under the standard mid because all you can do here is to provide a fixed offset. But if you go under advanced mates, there is this command here which allows you to provide a variable distance, you see? And here it can provide a variable angle. So these are advanced mates. So here I click on this uh, variable distance. And right now the distance is what is at 26 mil. But here I can have a minimum and a maximum. So I can say, hey, minimum of it should be 26. Don't make it any lower than 26. And the maximum of it, for example, could be like... Um, so something like 36 or uh, something like that, okay? So look what happens. So I okay that, right? So I added a limit. Now let's try to rotate this, see what happens. So here we try to rotate it. Okay, so here go, rotate, rotate, rotate. And now, it locks right here. So now I try to rotate it any further, it doesn't go. It stops right there. And that distance, if you measure it right now, it should be exactly 26 mil. Okay? You see? Here. It's 26 mil. That is the minimum you can go. Now, if you go backward and try to open it, again, you can open it, but not forever, and you're going to have limitations, okay? So here, 
we can keep uh, opening this one and you'll see that as soon as the offset becomes 36 I should be locked in position again so here you see I can still open open and once it goes to 36 which I'm getting almost at it because right now I can evaluate this again and you see right now I'm 35.9 there we go so I'm there and there we go ah, locked see here I cannot go up anymore and this is almost what when this one is out of the thread now here this knot is a little bit uh, thicker so I might need to allow it a little bit more than 36 maybe up to 40 mils or something but um, that's it basically I cannot go any further than that and it will lock itself so here I can go a little bit more but once I reach 40 it is going to lock itself there we go here you see it locked again and look here let me grab an edge and try to rotate it you see it's locked so I cannot go any further than that and this is where it goes to 40 and look right now it stopped and again if you measure this distance now should be 40. there we go so here we can limit how much is the offset between these two instead of giving it a fixed number so now this is a really good assembly of bolt and knot with motion limitations with no interference and this is a uh, perfect um, I would call assembly in this case if you don't want the bolt to uh, go and have interference and if you don't want it to get out of the knot completely so hopefully it was useful to you I'll see you in the next lecture thank you